at a time when the attacks on black people uh, and our conditions of life are growing increasingly sharp. Yes. These conditions are a major factor in shaping the repressive and fascist direction of the U.S. economy, the state, uh, and the society. Of the highest disregard by the U.S. government and the capitalist corporate rulers for basic human rights like Katrina and its aftermath does not build confidence among the black masses about the black power that many of us claim that we have to win demands for reparations and national liberation. Black people want to know what kind of society revolutionary change seeks to build and want and need to be organized to exercise transformative power as our expression of self-determination. You know, we have all kinds of priorities that pulled on us, but the priority to convene so we can constitute a force to mobilize the breadth and depth of our people as a real social force has not been deemed as a priority. We recognize there are different views among black activists about the black liberation movement. We are hopeful that we don't use this time to bring old and stale arguments from another period uh, to this new period uh, 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 that we must find ways to unify with and understand how to deal with contradictions among ourselves. That's why it's so important for the black left to play a role in organizing workers at the workplace and helping to build a consciousness of workers, helping them to build organization and to build a consciousness of the workers in the workplace, irregardless of their race. Irregardless of their race, because the workplace is not, you know, we don't necessarily have all only all blacks or all that. Some workplaces are like that, but many have a mixture, a percentage of black workers, a percentage of white workers, a percentage of black female workers. Uh, the city of Detroit, uh, we consider to be the epicenter of the economic crisis that has inflicted not only uh, the United States, but in fact it's a worldwide international crisis that is unprecedented since the years of the Great Depression of the 1930s and early 1940s. Here in the city of Detroit we have the highest unemployment rate of any other urban area in the United States. We also have one of the highest foreclosure rates of any other urban area in the United States. We have a complete onslaught on public institutions, public education is being systematically privatized and charterized here in the city of Detroit. Also attacks on the public sector are moving with rapid speed. And then we also have to really look at the issue of unemployment because young people in our cities are bearing the brunt of unemployment. In Washington DC, 50% of the young people are unemployed. See. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, and so if we're gonna, so if we're gonna uh, speak and organize with young people. We have to speak the issues that um, that speak to them. Right. What we need to do first is put the power back in the parents' hand. Not create PTAs anymore. Creating parent union. So this is critical for us uh, in the black community to recognize that we have to organize working people as a sector in the workplaces where they work. That is a strategic question for us and will impact on all other key questions and sectors that we're organizing. Because if we're in a position to you know, disrupt production in this country, we can disrupt this, whether we're talking about the prison system or women's rights or community rights or environmental injustice, all of these things become impacted by our ability uh, to, show, to show our strength where we are. Now, we know historically that African Americans have voted Democratic. We know that all of the members of the Congressional Black Caucus are members of the Democratic Party. But the question is, despite the fact that we have thousands upon thousands of African American elected officials throughout various regions of the United States who are connected with the Democratic Party, if we look at it demographically in regard to the current economic crisis, our people have borne the brunt of this current economic crisis. But uh, what has been striking to me and I think we're all culpable, culpable, the ones of us who've been around for a while, is how, in fact, how little organizing is happening yeah. by us yeah. in our communities. Yeah. If our communities are in the state uh, that they're in, to some extent, to a large extent, 
it's because we have dropped the ball. We have a system that structurally is a death system, but if we're not raising up new leadership, if we're not connecting to these young people, if we are not in a day-to-day -day basis doing the work that we have to do, we're never going to build this structure. We're never going to build the movement. on our shoulders to do this. Also, the role of youth is essential. We have to make a concerted effort to recruit and do political education among our young people in this country. We have to be on the campuses. We have to be in the communities to bring this message of unity and revolutionary politics to our youth. Uh, on my way to my assigned topic, uh, that women of color generally, African women in particular, have for a number of years been the largest, fastest growing segment of the prison population. Mm -hmm. And that um, has, has meant, um, contributed to the uh, destruction and dismantling of our community mm -hmm. because as much as we like to think we might be a patriarchal people, we really are matriarchal. Yeah. And as unfortunate as it is, when a brother gets locked down, that's a brother, and yes, the family is, is there to support. But when a sister gets locked down, the kids go one way, and the elders go the other way, and what support system is there for the brother is not there for the mother. So let me just say that while the spectrum ranges from the Kimba Smith situations where she becomes the mule that gets the time for his drugs um, to the uh, rare instances where the sister is her own entrepreneur and they are rare. In fact, it's so rare that it makes the news when it happens. Um, to instances and with greater frequencies where uh, sisters are being prosecuted and incarcerated for food stamp fraud, for other kinds of public benefits. is the question of pensions being attacked. We know that the pension system was attacked across the country and has almost been eliminated from the private sector. And now everything is moved, shifted over to these so-called 401ks and all of that. Well, in the black community, you know, as we age, we're totally dependent on having a, a pension. And 401k means nothing to us because our incomes, you know, are, are less than half of what white incomes are in this country. Those are our day-to-day -day realities. So uh, if you eliminate pensions, in the case of our community, our community is devastated. And sometimes the only thing, you know, between Social Security and the pension system is the only thing people have as we age to rely on. But now they're eliminating that, so there's a direct attack now in the public sector saying these public sector workers got nothing. You're greedy, you're taking all of this, you're, you're, you're making these cities have to pay into your pension program. When these type of questions come up, when we hear them being talked about in the abstract, we don't know that they are directly impacting on us sometimes in the black community and affecting us, you know, in a more profound way than any other sector. The burning issues for us as a people, as a group working toward black unity include uh, the high and rising number of young women, very young women, as young as 12, 13 years old, who are having children with no support, yeah. Uh, yeah. who are basically alone, especially in this neoliberal moment when the social supports, as weak as they were, have been completely dismantled. Mm -hmm. uh, we have families, I've been here for close to 10 days now, and my brother can speak to that, who are actually living on these streets. Yeah. They're trying to raise children on these streets. Yeah. And so it's a matter of um, survival.